What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from the quartering in. Ooh, Toddy Boy is up to it again with Bethesda. This time sneaking in some pretty egregious micro transactions into Fallout 76. And it's been a long time since we've covered the game. In fact, many hardcore fans of the game have reached out to me and asked me to try Fallout 76 now, one year later, and give my honest opinion about it. And I will say that the game is obviously in a much better place. It's frustrating that over a million people, two million people, had to buy the game up front and get what was a disastrous experience. It was sad that people bought the canvas bag and that turned out so bad. It was sad that all the microtrans... I mean, there was just an unending avalanche of mistakes rolling downhill at Fallout 76, which appears to be a one-man mission to prove everyone wrong, and they were, as expected, wrong. Nobody really wanted Fallout 76 except for hard, hardcore Fallout fans. And even my assistant over there is a big Fallout fan. And once he saw there were no NPCs or anything like that, his interest immediately waned. So it was an experiment. Probably a year or two too late. The idea of Battle Royale was already boring. The open world sandbox only appealed to a small portion of the original Fallout fans. And all in all, the game was... To say the least, a disappointment, I'm sure, for Bethesda. Fast forward about a year later, and they're starting to get up to some scummy things that I think are worth pointing out. I've said before that I'm trying to turn a, two, a new leaf in 2019 and try to appear to take a little less joy from fandoms, games falling apart. Because at the end of the day, it could happen to any one of us. There are many games that all of us have ex anticipated for many years that come out and they're buggy and we're disappointed but still trying to enjoy it. Borderlands 3 would be a good example of that. Most of the errors, in my opinion, should have been cleared up well before launching this and are unacceptable. But still, people are enjoying the game and happy to have it, and there's no reason to dump on them for it. Now, Fallout 76 was always supposed to have cosmetic-only items in their uh, store. That rule, of course, has been broken several times over the past few years, and now we've seen a ridiculous $7 mini-fridge as well as a trash collector bot that appears to have been in the game since the very start, only to roll out now for a price. I'm not sure the exact nexus of the we will only ever have cosmetic onlys, but on the Fallout 76 website in the FAQs, it says, while you play Fallout 76, you'll earn currency called Atoms by completing various gameplay challenges and achievements. This currency can be used to acquire in-game cosmetic customization items for your character. Earnable entirely by playing the game. Atoms can also be purchased separately for real money if you so choose. Now these type of monetization tactics are always sketchy because you never really know how much work has gone into reducing, or I'm sorry, increasing the grind and find the breaking point where your customers decide that, hey, a few bucks is worth it rather than grinding for hours. And I never fault anyone for making that decision. In fact, this business model is totally reasonable if you're going to give your game away for free and not charge a full $60 up front, which is what, of course, Bethesda did with Fallout 76. And originally, the Atomic Shop was something that was heavily scrutinized, heavily watched. But now, we've got a refrigerator, close to $10, as well as new bots. Fallout players are not impressed with the new $7 fridge. That's slightly old news. Fallout 76... $5 junk bot was apparently meant to be in the base game. You can see the collections, Collectron's housing in pre-launch game trailer and has had an entry in the 2018 Prima Strategy Guide and had an entry. Um, as Fraser put it out yesterday, many Fallout 76 players are unhappy with two new items for sale in the Atomic Shop. A refrigerator that slows down the decomposition of food and a robot that collects junk for you. By the way, neither of these are cosmetic only. They're definitely quality of life microtransactions. I'm not going to call them pay to win, but they're absolutely not cosmetic. They cost 700 and 500 atoms respectively. And while atoms can be earned by completing challenges, they can also be purchased with real money. If you decided to buy both items, it costs you about $15 for the new additions if you don't already have some atoms handy. Most of the player complaints stem from the fact that Bethesda originally stated the Atomic Shop would only contain cosmetic items. 
and the fridge and scrap pot, along with repair kits and scrap kits added to the shop earlier this year, aren't cosmetics. They have an effect out of the game world. Though I just bought the scrap pot myself, and I can confidently state it, it is practically a cosmetic item because it barely collects anything, I can collect more scrap in two minutes than it can in an hour. Well, that's not a reason to forgive Bethesda. It's just another thing that Bethesda put out that didn't work. But others have noticed. It appears a collection robot was originally intended as the base game. This is according to PC Gamer, by the way. Base game, not something you'd need to spend atoms on to unlock. On Reddit, user Alfir Madillo, I don't know, pointed out that you can spot the collection or at least the little housing unit he waddles back and forth in on his junk collecting patrols in the official Fallout 76 camp trailer back in June 2018. Here's a screenshot, and there it is there. Granted, it's just a robot's little house that's shown. You don't see the collectron itself lurching around while talking excitedly about finding used TP and aluminum foil. At the time the trailer was made, it may have simply been a decoration of some sort. However, someone named Space Leviathan on Imager posted these images from what appear to be the mobile version of Fallout 76 Prima Guide, published in November 2018, which doesn't name the Collectron, but makes mention of a scavenging station with protect protectron types that can forage for you. And again, there's a picture of the Collectron housing station. I just bought a $9 Kindle copy of the Prima Guide from Amazon myself. This is turning into an expensive day, and I can confirm it's a craftable item alongside a mention of the resource extractors, which you can also place at your camp or part of the base game. So it looks like the Collectron was intended to be a part of Fallout 76 from the start rather than an Atomic Shop item. While I feel a lot of backlash over these minimally useful Atomic Shop items are a bit overblown, it does pretty much stink to have the feature of a game cut out from original release, then sold later as an add-on, even when it's possible to earn enough microtransaction currency in the game to afford it. I think that this is a common, I don't want to say, I guess maybe excuse or qualification people make. Like, yeah, you can earn it. Okay, sure. But that raises the questions about the in-game economy. Like, how much research did Bethesda do to figure out, look, it's reasonable. People can get these items if they grind a reasonable number of hours. Let's take that times 1.5 to help increase the amount of people buying these items. Now, I'm not against cosmetic micro microtransactions. I'm not against quality of life microtransactions, especially in games that are free to play. But when you're charging 60 or 80 or $100, depending on which version you bought, these things are open to a lot more scrutiny. This is from five days ago when they rolled out the fridge. Uh, the latest Fallout 76 patch hasn't gone down very well with citizens of the post-apocalyptic West Virginia. The update brings some big changes with events, with a new nuclear winter map, a bunch of rewards. But the Atomic Shop additions have ruffled some feathers, inspiring a multitude of critical posts on the subreddit. Now, I get it. You have to make money to keep these games up. You made a couple million bucks when you launched it, but at no point would that be enough money to leave the game servers running indefinitely, or at least to allow you to provide additional content to keep your players in game. I get that. But these things are just, they're two in the gray because you never really know how they adjust the quality of life to increase the likelihood of you purchasing these quality of life improvement games. Look, games like WoW Classic, I would say the grind is a feature. And you do pay for that game every month. And you could argue that some things are not exactly quality of life. You know, the in-game store, the mounts, things like that. But they're not exactly the same thing. It'd be like, wow, selling, I don't know, level... Oh, whoops, they do that. I have a problem with that too, selling, you know, level 60 characters up front. But you know what? I don't have to buy them. And if I'm not playing in a PvP server, it doesn't affect my game at all. I'm a total loner. In WoW Classic, I play a hunter. I like to just go about my business. I don't like grouping up. So it doesn't affect me in any way. While atoms can be earned in-game, they can also be purchased in bundles. Together, they cost 1,200 atoms. So you need to buy a $500 and $1,100 bundle, $1,100 bundle, which is about $15. The items then cost more than a lot of people paid for the game itself. Haha. <laughs> Originally, Bethesda said that only cosmetic items would be sold, but quickly ceased to be true when repair kits were added to the shop. Their addition was controversial, but Bethesda argued that they were fine because they didn't give anyone a competitive advantage. Players worried that it would be a slippery slope allowing other utility items into the shop, 
and they were clearly right. Well, yeah, if you put an item in the shop and people buy it, you're going to put more of that in there. Now, you could argue that, well, if it doesn't give anyone a competitive advantage, maybe at the end of the day, you don't have a problem with it. And I think in the grand scheme of things, is this the total end of the world? Is this like the worst thing a video game has ever done? No, but I think it's important to point out when video game developers, in particular gigantic, super huge mega ones, lie to the face of their fans, which they've continued to do. They've continued to not inspire enough open wallets through cosmetics, clearly that they've had to put quality of life microtransactions in there instead. If they had the best or good enough uh, pricing on some of the cosmetics, maybe people would be more inclined to purchase them, but they figured out obviously that if people can spend a little bit of money to spend less time doing the things they want, they're more likely to purchase those, which I think at the end of the day is fine. However, we never really know what things are done in game to increase the grind, to increase the likelihood that someone will want to purchase something that will make their quality of life easier. And when it's now been confirmed that the Collectron was basically in the original game, then stripped out to be sold back to us later, that by far is far, far worse and a perfect example of what everyone talks about with DLC when it used to come right on the disc. People could find it on the disc and then realize that it had been stripped out of the game, sold to players later as some sort of DLC or an add-on. That type of stuff is ridiculous. And as players will never really know, that's the problem. I want Fallout 76 to be a great game for the many players that still enjoy it. I want Fallout 76 to be a lot of fun for the people that are doing RPs in it. For the people that stuck it out, for the real hardcore Fallout fans, I want it to be good for you. And I hope that you're happy with the game now. But these type of microtransactions are a big business problem. They're a Bethesda problem. They're necessarily a Fallout 76 problem, and they need to be called out. As the new version of Skyrim is on the horizon, one wonders how much grindier they'll make that game, especially if they start selling quality of life upgrades in their store as well because as we all know you can never trust these people as far as you can throw them so i'll continue to point it out as long as you continue to help by liking and sharing these videos we'll talk to you again real soon hey thanks so much for watching this video and i really hope you enjoyed it above you'll find some links to watch more videos as well as a nice big button to subscribe which i hope you'll do if you did enjoy it make sure before you go that you leave a like and a comment on the video because you are the number one reason this channel continues to grow and i appreciate you